So this is the inbound closing formula. And while we are waiting for the rest of us to stream in, let me share with you a quick story as to why this so what you see in this next photo was me in December 17, 2024. And this was me sitting alone inside uh, what was I read a martial arts studio. And that was my main business that I had for 10 years. And you can see by the end of it, I was sitting alone. And this was after class had ended. And I had several moments like this to myself. Thing. Why was I able to stay? Uh, what is missing? Because at the time I had a good offer and I was able to do my skill well and people liked what I had to offer. But some months I would have clients and then some months there would be no clients and I felt and I think the worst part was it was a blind spot. And the thing about blind spots is that when it is a blind spot, you actually don't know what you didn't know. And I kind of have a certain idea at the back of my mind because I can teach, uh, I can train, I can do my craft really, really well, just like some of you are fitness coaches, some of you are spiritual coaches, and some of you have things that you want to do, that you can do that thing well. What does it mean that if I can do what I do really well, I'll be able to have a business? But it was not going the way I wanted it to go. And I was like, what's missing? So I can tell you right now that in the end, what was missing was an understanding of marketing and sales. And for today, I'll be focusing on the sales aspects because people will come to me and say that, look, I like what you have and I want to work with you. But then these conversations will always get very awkward or I will not know how to close the conversation. And I will feel uneasy when it was time for me to have sales type of uh, conversations. And over time, this is a skill that I'm not aware of or I'm kind of aware, but I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to build it. I didn't know how to nurture it. And what am I going to do about it? Right. So eventually I understood that, okay, there's a set of skills that I'm going to need to have to get under my belt. One of them being copywriting, because I really struggled to write uh, content for my business. And I needed to get comfortable with the whole idea. Of, and I needed to get comfortable with the ability to sell, because without these skills, then you will be what I call a one-dimensional business owner, where you just have the craft, you're good at the craft that people pay you for, but you're actually more of a technician, and you cannot sustain uh, the whole business, because there are a whole series of parts, the five pillars that I teach in my close method. So the business owner has to complete in order to have that complete business. And after copywriting, I realized that I also needed to learn how to book calls and close deals. And I began on this whole uh, redemption journey to say whatever was all those skills that was missed on predicament. It was now time for me to redeem myself and go on a quest, skill one by one, and learn how to close. So fast forward in 2024, these skills now permeate every aspect of my business. It permeates all my business units, it affects how I think, how I strategize, how I lead, how I plan, how I communicate. And I can only imagine, and let me know if you relate to this, where when 
you come into this space and you say, well, it's 2024 and everything is online now. And I really need to get comfortable uh, putting myself out there. I really need to get comfortable expressing myself. I really need to get comfortable uh, having sales conversations that are sometimes easy, sometimes not easy, uh, sometimes comfortable, sometimes not comfortable. And I need to advance this aspect of my game because I don't want to go through you know, the different unpredictable highs and lows of my business. I can only imagine if I were to start my journey seven years later in 2024, I've been with a lot of uh, high level gurus that I can't relate and I can't use the things they teach. I feel it's being taught at a very mass level and it sounds great and it looks great. But when I try to use it, I don't understand it. And I don't know how to implement it for my business. And at some point, it's all theory that I don't know how to apply. And then there are also a lot of uh, closer programs coming out year after year. And I want to improve my skills, but I don't know which one is really going to teach me the juice and the real source that's really going to take me and my game to the next level. They look the same. They sound the same. And I have invested in several of these. Like whatever you buy and see online, I probably buy and see online as well. And if you look at the OGs of sales and you go way back to books like uh, Spin Selling, the classics, or you pull out some old tapes from Sandler, you will see that it is a lot of regurgitation OG programs, like a you know, problem awareness, situation awareness, and then uh, redirection, misdirection, one direction, and all kinds of direction. And I look at the theory, I look at all these solutions out there, and I'm like, I, I get why they're teaching this, and I can see people getting results with it, but it's not my voice. It's not how I understand it. And now there's a live person in front of me. They want to buy my high ticket offers, and I know that if I do my part well, I will have a great client. If I'm able to support them through a proper conversation, you know, I don't bomb the conversation. I don't mess the conversation up. I don't try and force feed all these different techniques and tonalities and things that are great, but it's not me and I, I it's not my voice and I can't get it out on a sales call. At the same time, I really want to make sure this sales call goes well so that I can have the client uh, that I'm speaking with and then more of these ideal clients over the days, weeks, and months. So what do I have to do in this ocean of solutions that all look and sound the same? And you know, it's almost to the point of if you probably try to get on a sales call now with a prospect, they can probably tell you what are the techniques you're doing? You know what I'm saying? It's like whatever you buy and you learn online, they probably bought and learned online as well. It's like whatever technique you know, they know. You know, whatever mm -hmm. you're trying to do, they probably know it just as well as you, if not better than you. So it's gotten to a point where authenticity is what's needed. It's gotten to a point where people want to feel like they're really talking to you that you're being as intentional as you can, you're being as present as you can, that you're no longer running to these high-level Google programs, you're not using these things that look and sound great, but it is not you. I think it's going to a point where things are so chaotic and messy that if you can just bring it back down to simplicity, you win. If you can just bring it back down to authenticity, you win. And sure, you might not get all these high-level techniques right. You might mess some of, some of this up. But at the end of the day, if you're able to fulfill what I'm going to be teaching in the next two hours, you will find that not only people appreciate you for not trying to game them with techniques, you'll find that they appreciate you for creating a space and giving them the respect and supporting them through the problems that they know they already have. 
and giving them the clarity on what is your process and then being fully transparent with what you have to sell and giving them the space and once again, the respect to say that, okay, now I have a full picture of what you're providing and I am having this buyer conversation with you. So can you help me navigate through the following? And so it becomes the both of you are on the same side. It's not a case of you learning trying to put the program on them. It's like you learn the textbook and then you throw in the textbook at your prospect, right? And you don't feel natural. You don't feel secure. And your prospects also are not going to feel secure with the whole way that the call is going. So if you are a business owner and you're closing for yourself or your solopreneur, you sell a service, I see a lot of freelancers coming out these days, uh, super young, uh, they're selling copywriting skills, they build funnels, they run ads, uh, they have some kind of personal development or spiritual mindset offer and you're doing your own thing or you lead a sales team, you train and lead a team or you're a professional that you sell in the corporate world or B2B or you're a remote closer or remote setter. By understanding what I have to share today, you will be able to create a flow for your clients to come towards you in a way where they don't feel gay, they don't feel, they don't feel manipulated, uh, they feel respected, and more importantly, they feel empowered to make a decision based on what's best for them. So instead of selling at people, you create this energy of a proper and complete solution for your prospects to understand and move towards you. Hence, inbound, instead of you having to chase, push, and force volume and burn yourself up. So let me know if you relate to this for you or your team. Do you find that when you try to improve your sales games, you read books, and you watch videos and you attend courses and it looks perfect and it sounds great. And you can just see that if I'm actually able to complete what I'm learning, I will sell better. I will have more income and I can break my income ceiling. I can bring in more revenue for my business. And you then get on a live call and you speak to a live person. And it's just not the same. Like when it's time to implement, it is just not the same. There's a thousand thoughts flying back and forth in your mind. Things happen that you can't predict. The prospects throw unexpected curveballs or challenges, or you're just met with variation. And sometimes just slight variations, just the slightest of variations of what you learn in theory. And it's like, what am I going to do? How am I going to overcome this? So then you take this question back to the last program you invested in and you say, coach, I tried to close this person or I tried to get this person on the call or I tried to enroll this person into my high ticket offer. And this person said this, what should I do? And now your coach turns around and replies you, well, if they say this, then you say that. And you're like, wow, this sounds great. And so you go back and you say it and it's just not you. It doesn't sound right. And you don't even understand what you're saying. And you're like, it didn't work. Uh, can you, can you demonstrate? Can you guide me? Can you break it down? And you either don't get a reply, they give you a patronizing answer, or they say, oh, you go talk to this person, or you go ask that you're old. And you're like, I need help right here. So I'm looking a high ticket client. And I'm not seeing what the blockage is. And I really need help to cross that line. You know, why can't I get some real help? And Either that or they say, well, I can give you the answer, but it is inside, you know, 600 hours of content that you have to sift through. And you're like, there's no precision. It's all overload. And so now sales becomes this impossible monster to conquer. If you can relate to this whole experience that I'm describing, uh, let me know in the comments. And for those of you who are already taking calls in your business, for your own business, I sent out an email yesterday sharing 
uh, the top five ways that a call is usually destroyed. And if you're doing any one of this, be sure to uh, stop doing that and start doing the opposite. And this will help you save a ton of your calls. The first one is not diagnosing accurately. The purpose of the call is for you to do a thorough diagnosis. But if you are lost inside your own mind saying that, oh, well, I need to close, I need to close, I need to, I need to remember my script, I need to do this, I need to do that. And you completely lose this focus, which is to diagnose the call accurately, then the rest of the call is not going to flow, right? Or you spend the whole call validating your prospects, telling them that, well, you're doing great, you're doing fantastic, uh, keep up the good work. And so by the end of the call, they don't feel like they have a problem to solve anymore. And they go away feeling that, well, I'm okay now. It's not that bad. I don't need to invest. I don't need to have any urgency, right? So you're you're reversing the close. You know, you're going, you're taking them from close to open, right? That's the second mistake I see happen a lot. Or you go into coaching mode and you think that, well, if I just add a ton of value, they're going to love me and they're going to buy. And it actually achieve the same effect as effect number two, which is they feel like, well, since you've already coached me and I've got all this value, you know what? I'm going to go back and try a little bit of that on my own and then I'll get back to you, right? Let's go into coaching mode. It makes you feel like an expert. It makes you feel important. It makes you feel like you're giving a ton of value and they don't buy. Number four is you're breaking the syntax, okay? Of course, if you know what you're doing, you can break several of these rules because you know what you're doing. But if you're at a phase where you're not even clear of how a sequence of a call should flow, don't break the rules. They okay, master the rules first before you break them because every phase in a call exists for a reason. It exists to set the stage for the second thing that you're going to achieve. So if you jump around, you go from urgency and then you know you start from background and then you, you go to the goals and then you go back to background again and then you try to do a little bit of rapport and then you go back to urgency. If you keep jumping all around the place because you're not prepared, you're messing the syntax up, you're messing the sales call up. And the final one is breaking rapport. And rapport is not a technique. It is not a step. It's not something that you do at the start of the call. Right? It's something that needs to be maintained throughout the call. Okay, And anytime that you do something intentional, unintentional, that causes the rapport to break, the connection is gone, the whole call is destroyed. So conversely, if you're able to do the opposite, which is what I'm going to teach in today's session, and you can diagnose accurately, you can confidently, clearly, and comfortably talk about the uncomfortable things that you know your prospects need to face and own and take ownership. And if instead of coaching, you are able to help them close themselves and you can maintain the proper integrity of the whole call and keep it effective and concise and in a way that the sequence makes sense while maintaining a strong connection throughout and you're able to do this five in a way where it is your voice it makes sense for you and you're not referring to any script you're not trying to game them you're not trying to play or run a technique on them Okay, you would have achieved the inbound closing formula. Okay, here are some feedback that I collected throughout the week. Uh, first one, confidence. I want to close, but I don't feel the confidence in closing. This person feels like they have an imposter syndrome. They feel confused when the first coach said, you have to be enthusiastic. You have to have high energy. Have you learned this before? And he felt confused. He bought a fitness business sales course and they also taught a little bit of closing, which he found was too basic. And when he actually implemented these courses, he felt that, you know, it was great on theory, but then now when he was time to implement it, it's like, how? I tried so many tactics. Okay, another one, uh, he's not satisfied with his closing techniques. It's not, so this person is very self-aware, right? 
and I'm already coaching this client, so I know that this person has talent. This person can be trained. He says, I'm actually impressed with your closing confidence. And I will share my story in a moment. And the reason I want to share my story is not to tell you about myself, but I want you to see yourself in your story and understand that if you're going through anything similar, there is a way out of it. There is a way to advance your closing skills. And advancing your closing skills itself, in my opinion, is the most important skill because it permeates your whole business, how you lead, how you think, how you communicate, even with your own team, you're closing them. Even with your own clients, they're already clients, you're still closing them. Even yourself, you're still closing yourself. So I feel the closing is, is everywhere. It's life. It will permeate in you, if everything you do in life, in your business. So when this person said he has limiting beliefs, I don't think it's just related to sales. I think if you have limiting beliefs in your system, it's just going to affect not just your sales, but everything else you do. And number three, I closed my own office and the frustration was inside uh, this idea that, okay, I have to learn the words. How many of you have actually learned the words and then you memorize it and then you just follow this step by step and it's gripping you. And so you feel like, I can't express myself because you know the script is gripping me and instead of helping you, now the structure of whatever you've learned previously is actually frustrating you. So if you have your own personal experiences of trying to navigate through this space where you want to close high ticket sales and the learning curve is just uh, not moving in your favor, share with me in the comments what you personally experience and let's have a conversation about it. And in the meantime, I will take a moment to share what happened for me in 2017. So this was me seven years ago in my business, pre-closing, I haven't learned how to close. I focus a lot on my craft and I can see a lot of coaches, business owners today are great at their craft, whether it's spirituality, whether it's fitness, like you guys are super experts on the technical aspects of your craft, which was me right there. And you, you love it, right? You, you can teach really well, you can practice really well, and people come to you for that. And I was in that phase. And what you see in the front is uh, Mr. Bruce Lee, you know, uh, fit, young, healthy, have his own business. And people thought, oh, this guy is having you know, the time of his life. And I was, and I was. But behind the scenes, today, when someone tell me, oh, just say this or just do that, I it's very hard for me to believe. I cannot relate to that because... When I was struggling with marketing and sales, this is the burnout. And I'm very happy that I took these photos and I intentionally took them during those time because it was me at my lowest. And I knew that, you know, I have to remember, I want to, I want to re actually remember this scene and remember this pain because there's so many lessons that came my way. You know, before this, I had so much time to learn how to close. I had so much time to learn how to monetize my business and take it online. I had so much time to prepare. But I was I was too focused on other things. And by the time I realized like, I'm not able to sustain this business because I did not prepare myself to learn how to market and close inbound high ticket sales. Or at least just do the online portion of my business right. You know, even if I just did 10 or 20% uh, of preparation in advance, we would not have gotten to this point. And it got to this point where I received a letter from my bank, which is saying that, okay, look, your bank balance has fallen beyond negative. And so if this still continues to happen, we're going to have to shut down your account. And if any of you have received this kind of letter, you know that okay, it's doomsday. And actually I still had $12, right? But the $12 was in cash. And at this point, I invested everything in trying to learn marketing and sales, uh, dropshipping, copywriting. I wanted to learn all these things and I was down to my final $12. So what you're seeing here is my legendary $12 mic. The mic cost $10. And so what you see below was my final $2, which eventually after 
uh, just before I closed my first sale, I spent $1.80 to buy myself a last cup of tea. And then I actually closed my first sale after. Okay, so I was down to that final 20 cents. And this $2 note, which I still have it somewhere, the reason I'm telling you this story is for you to understand that with closing, you see a lot of people coming in today with the mentality that it is a cost. I just need to watch the video. And then I will get the skills. And I over the years, I've had people tell me something similar that I've watched the videos already. I said, I listen to your calls and it seems like you need a lot of you know, refinement and improvement in certain aspects. And I asked, have you studied this thing? You know, have you revised this thing? And they're like, I watched the videos already, right? And this expectation that if I can just do this part-time and just watch a bit of videos, uh, you know, and just take out a little bit here and there and... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it, right? It's it's that's not how it works. That's a very unrealistic way of understanding how the game works. I mean, if you have prior experience, if you're natural in sales, if you just get it, get it quickly, of course, right? You can be those kind of, kind of those people in class where they don't study and somehow they get all the good grade. I mean, if, if you have the kind of talent, that's great for you. But I can tell you, me moving up the learning curve, every day is like, what am I learning? Right? What, what is the teacher saying? I can see it, but I don't understand it. I can understand it, but I can't implement it. And when the overwhelm stacks, you know, there's, there's no part in my experience I felt that closing was just a cause. No part in my experience I felt that if I could just pay someone to give me a guaranteed placement, or I can pay someone to give me a guaranteed sale, or if I can pay someone to give me a guaranteed tonality, okay, I would be successful. This was never a cost for me. This was never part-time for me. This was about redeeming myself. It was about facing myself. It was about conquering myself, all my fears, all my doubts, all the times where I feel like I really need to take that extra time to brush up my skills. I really need to take that extra effort to read that book. And when others go play, I'm at home role play. When others go socialize, I'm at home refining my craft. Because at this point, if I didn't take it seriously, I would never have gotten out of this. So the young kids today, you see that or not even a matter of age, but this whole idea, this whole expectation that I can just wing it, or I can just watch some video and then I can close. Okay? If you believe it, you're going to have a very rude awakening. Because by the time your course ends, by the time your teacher disappears, by the time you send a message or email to their support team and they're like, oh, we can't help you because you know your time with the program is over and if you want, you can watch you know 600 videos and now... Where's your investment? And where's your application? And where's your closing skills? Right? So my point is, in sharing this story with you, of course, you have your own story, right? You have things that you've gone through yourself and you have had difficulties that you have had to struggle through yourself. And I'm sharing my story with you, not because I don't tell you about me, but I want to see, I want you to see yourself in, in your story and understand that victory is not inside the course victory is not inside you know whatever guru that you you paid for that disappeared or gave you a diluted counter your skills and your confidence to close it's not it's not going to come from there and and all that time wasted you know i've got to create content every day i got to you know talk to people and show that i'm talking to people you have to really, really ask yourself, am I doing those things just to feel productive? Am I doing those things just to feel like I'm making some progress? Or have you seriously taken a long, deep, hard 
thinking session, a heart-to-heart conversation with yourself to say that, what's my real plan right now? If I have one year, if I have six months, and here I give myself six months to say that I don't want to be like these other people you know, that are just wasting time, uh, partying around, you know, chit-chatting, getting inspired, but they're not implementing, they're not building, and I don't want to be like that, and I don't have time to be like that. I need my own plan because your victory in your story can only be in your hands. And you probably can't see most of the handwriting here, so I'll just summarize it for you. The date that I circle in yellow right here is 2nd of April, 2018, and the time was 4.51 p.m. I sat down and I asked myself, what's going to happen this year? And I have it prepared in your members area, the digital form of this in, in what I call the identity index. The identity index and whatever limiting beliefs that are in your system, whatever goals that you know you're going to have to achieve this year, if not next year, you're just back to New Year's resolutions and you're living the same year on repeat. And I, I've known people that started with me from 2018, is six years ago. And today, they're still asking how to find an opportunity, how to overcome this objection, how to do a sales call. They're, they're asking the same exact questions as six years ago. So if you're not careful, the time can just pass by like that. Like the time does not change anything until you recognize that your victory is in your own hands. So in the member area, I put in the identity, identity index, which is a digital version of this plan, this vision, okay, of how you're gonna create your own wits. Okay, even if you just achieve 50% of this, even if you just achieve 10% of this, at least you know that this is where I'm going. And I've thought about this and I can see where I am. There are too many people avoid doing this, thinking it's comfortable until the five, six years pass and they're like, oh my God, you know, I'm 35 years old. Oh my God, I'm 40 years old, right? And then they say, oh, well, I wish I started with you. I wish I started earlier. And so now, now is the best time for you to recognize this. Okay? And I won't say that I did it all by myself, because what I did was I set the plan and a lot of the parts of the plan I actually didn't know because there's still a lot of unknown. Like the more I wrote this down, like, you know, by May, I got to produce my first portfolio. By June, I got to hit 3K per month. And by the end of the year, I got to hit 10K per month. But what goes into these milestones? Some parts of it I could I knew, some parts of it I had to guess, and for the most part of it, I didn't know. Because I was planning ahead, right? Until I met my first mentor, I strongly believe that when you do these kind of things, you're actually changing your frequency. And you start attracting things that, because you've already decided, right? A lot of people, they avoid doing this. And so what they do is they end up being stuck in the old frequency and they never attract new things, you know? But as soon as I wrote this down and I was serious and I was like, I'm going to give myself this time, right? I know I can't achieve everything in closing in one shot, but you know what? In May, I'm just going to tackle this one thing, okay? And in June, I'm just going to tackle this half of a thing. And in July, I'm going to tackle the other half of that thing. And if I keep going at this, you know, by December... I should be able to achieve this and I want to achieve this. So as soon as I, I did that, I realized that that commitment to myself, even when I didn't know how, that commitment to myself, even when I couldn't see the path, I started attracting things. And one of the most important people that I attracted was my first mentor. And he was from the UK and he actually saw all the work I was doing. And he said, I want you on my team. I want you to close sales for me. And I was very transparent with him. I said, I'm only two weeks old. I just started my first closer program. And I used to be a business owner, but now I'm trying to close sales. 
and I've just started my program. I haven't even completed it yet, right? And he said, that's not important. I've seen what you're doing and I think you're someone that I can train. And he wasn't trying to sell me a course. He wasn't trying to take anything from me. And he's in the UK. He worked the US time zone. I'm based in Singapore and he still wanted me on his team. And so I said, well, send me everything you have. I'm going to study it. I'm going to learn it. And every day, or I should say every night, you can see the curtains that I had to put beside my window to block out the sunlight because I'm in Singapore. I still am. And I closed US time zones with my mentor, Carl, a UK guy. And throughout the night, I'll be working. And then in the day, I would cover my windows with all these opaque curtains. And as soon as and it was time to work, he would send me a text, Sean, you know, in his UK accent, voice note on WhatsApp, Sean, I have a call for you. Are you ready? I said, yes, sir. I'm ready. Sean, I have a call for you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. 10 p.m., one call. 11.30, one call. Midnight, one call. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Call after call after call. And while I was learning the ropes on the field, I went back to the initial closer programs that I've seen. There were business owners inside the program. There were closer sellers in the programs. They were all still in practice mode. You know, they were still role-playing, getting busy doing stuff, but I was already accumulating field experience. I can remember most of the calls I took on this team. And every day there were so many calls, all kinds of energy, all kinds of variations. There was a Russian that was trying to bully and bulldoze me for one entire hour. I still have the call recording. There was a Canadian lady, very soft, very feminine, very undecided, and like back and forth, back and forth. There was a guy from Netherlands who needed a lot of leadership. And all these things, how do you learn from a course? But right? when the Russian guy was just, you know, bull, trying to bulldoze me, how do you how do you learn this from a course? When the lady was undecided and I had to be clear and firm and confident enough to help her navigate, how do you learn that from a course? When the guy from Netherlands, what's the proper term to call a guy from Netherlands? Someone put it in the chat. Well, the guy needed a lot of leadership. And how do you learn that from a course? Right? If your coach can't tell, oh, if, if the Russian say this, you say that. If the Canadian lady say this, you use this tonality. Right? That's all the theory. But you have to learn through implementation. So year after year, company after company, from Carl was the first one. Oh, Mike says Dutch. <laughs> yeah, the Dutch guy. Okay, so after Carl, I met Mark. After Mark, I met Saba. I closed on Bob Proctor's products. Year after year, you know, week after week, month after month, program after program, team after team, I learned through implementation. It's not from a course. Right? And with every year, like someone said over here, right? I'm impressed with your closing confidence. I want to have it. You can't get it from a course. And I told him it has to be earned. And if you're stuck in practice mode and you're wasting time preparing to prepare, well, one day I'll get ready. One day I'll get ready. You'll never be ready. Right? And you might say, but what's the problem? You know, what's the issue? I can, I can have time. Right? I'm young. I have time. You know, I can focus more on my craft. Right? I've got something good going. Okay, for me, without this skill, it's game over. If you can't close, if you don't have the confidence to close and you know you can't do it, okay, you know. Sooner or later, the wake-up calls are going to chase and catch up and then it's game over. Okay, but who knows? It may be a good thing because you might actually need to reach that spot to discover your superpower. Okay, it may be like... These are disadvantages, but it became my greatest superpower. You know what I'm saying? And 
a lot of people look at screenshots like this, right? Or you go online, you say, yay, I close. Or you say, oh, I made so much money. And you might think to yourself, I want it, right? I want to perform. I want to close. I want to make money. And if you believe that doing a course will get you these results, okay, then you haven't understood the lessons that I'm sharing with you today. This in the corporate world is probably one or two months salary, right? And for those of you who come from the corporate world, you know, right? You, you, you have lived that life. But the world that I'm in, the world that I come from, is a different beast altogether. I've seen people there are tons of years of sales experience, tons of years of B2B sales experience, tons of years in you know, the corporate ladder, very high positions, senior executives. The first question they come to me is how to close high ticket sales online or how to find an opportunity. Right? And I'm like, you guys are legends in sales, right? How come? And then they say, it's a, it's a completely different thing. So this in the corporate world is one to two months of salary, but this in our space, it's in the learning curve. It has nothing to do with time. It has nothing to do with your credentials. It's nothing to do with who you worked for before. It's nothing to do with your certifications. It's nothing to do with the guaranteed stuff that you buy. It's in you. Did you understand it? Did you go through the reps? Did you practice? Did you live what you're trying to achieve? So don't be fooled by the results that you see online. Some of them might be real. Some of them might not be. We don't know. But by the time the results happen, what's happening behind, you don't know. So there's no point comparing. There's no point looking outside. You have to look inside and you have to dig deep. This was me at my lowest. It's the same guy as this. I just went to style my hair, put on a suit, and I was like, time to role play. Time to make a video. Time to find opportunity. Time to prospect. At 3, 4 a.m., that's what I'm doing. Right? And then today, people come and say, hey, I want your confidence. I want your results. Right? Of course, afterwards, afterwards, people start to see, oh, you, you got married. You're traveling the world. You went back to doing your passions. You have a sales team and you're happy and they're like, I want that. Uh, can I buy a seven week course on this? You know, if I pay enough money, can I have what you have? And they don't see this. So I don't believe in theory. I believe in implementation. I don't believe in videos. I believe in internalizing. I don't believe in fast results. I believe in owning it, you know? So the inbound closing formula was designed to let you experience everything that I talk about, because I feel that the next program that tells you, you know, uh, problem awareness and then motivate yourself or mindset is very important. Like I feel like every course has that. So I don't want to create something that you can easily get online. I want to give you something that can inspire you and be used as a structure for you to not only create the kind of discipline that you need to have in your life, but to understand what victory really means for yourself and to have that structure for you to implement and experience the things that are implemented and experienced. And the only reason I can teach you this is because it it comes from this journey. The way that I've learned high ticket sales is not from a course. It comes from this journey. And I'm not saying that you're going to have my journey, but I'm saying that you need to have your own journey and understand your own journey and not just say, well, okay, I understand what is my own journey. I, I want to give you this structure, a very real structure that three, four months from now, you can come back and say that without this structure, I would have wasted months, you know, trying to make content, trying to change my cover photo, trying to get all these causes that teach what tonality, techniques, words. I, I could have wasted all my time there, but thanks to you, Sean, your inbound closing formula clearly defined. 
what victory means to me, to me. Where is my value? How can I actually experience this myself and own this skill? Okay, and then afterwards, whatever you want to buy, like today I still buy everyone's stuff, right? Then you can go ahead and buy. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the, the, the two victories. First, I will talk about the inner victory today. For all you people watching the free stream, this is all yours. And the outer victory, I'm going to charge for this portion. This is the implementation part. This is me guiding you. This is me giving you my paid stuff. This is me doing work with you. So I'm going to charge for the second half. The first half is completely free. And I've covered my origin story. I've covered why closing. Okay, I'm going to talk about business milestones, defining your success. And I'm going to cover the inner game of closing. And in the second half, I'm going to dive deep into the formula itself, buyer's journey, seller's process, what I call the key and lock principle, the micro close. Okay, and the inbound closing psychology. This is what you're not going to see in all the technique-based program. The technique and the script, you can pick from them. But what you understand, okay, what you understand and you experience and you implement. Okay, like today, if a live prospect can't book a call with you, how are you going to navigate? That's your experience. That's your implementation. That's all here. Okay, plus some amazing bonuses itself that would be worth the price of enrollment. I'm going to give you my complete script. I'm going to teach you my secret technique, the bait and serve close. Okay. First thing, earlier on when I showed you my vision map, okay, you can't see the handwriting, but you kind of know how it works. In your members area, I've created the identity index, okay, which is a combination of the external strategy and your internal beliefs. And the reason you're writing all this down is so that I can coach you through it. And this is just a digital version of what you see in my vision map. And I want you to do something similar where you're able to actually pinpoint in your business, what are all the things that are important that you're going to achieve this year or in the next three years? And you have to identify that. Because if you don't write it down, Right, you're gonna be like me in 2017, running all over the place. The hours are just passing. You might be getting more productive, but are you actually doing the things that count? Right, and at the end of the day, your sales skills, your closing chops, that's going to be the lifeblood of your business. It's, it's going to determine how you bring in revenue. And like I said earlier, don't avoid the hard stuff because there are people that avoid the fear or the pressure of sales subconsciously. There are people that avoid the pressure of the learning curve. There are people that avoid the responsibility of planning. Okay, I can see this in some people and you can avoid in the short term, but eventually if this happens to be your lesson, it's going to come back, right? And you're not going to like it when it when it comes back. I, I, I didn't like it when all the things I avoided came back. So I was like, okay, now, now I have to face it. Okay, I want to talk about defining success, uh, progress and result. And this is very important, especially when I'm coaching. A lot of people just want to look at results. And if you really look at this, what is this? This is just a screenshot. This is just someone transferring money. If you even look at money itself, like these days, I don't think any of us really, really touch cash, right? Everything is digital, it's transferred, it's, it's online payments, it's QR code. Like I very seldom touch cash these days and it might be the same for you. And when you impact someone with your business, when you have a high ticket offer, and you use it to impact someone, and they found so much value in what you sold them, that they just have an exchange of energy, they transfer this to you, you go to the bank, you withdraw that out, then it becomes cash, right? And people are looking at the result, and it's just paper. But what's really happening was that there was an exchange of energy, there was an exchange of energy as a result, but what happened 
before the result happened? Do you see? Like people saw the results outside, but do they see the progress before that? They, you see the wins that you see online, or you see the experiences that go behind. So I want you to take a good, thorough look at your processes today. Did you practice? Did you study? Did you implement? If your answer is no, you're never getting this. If your answer is yes, you have to understand what did you do well? That's the reason you get a coach. It's so that, okay, today, and this is what my mentor always did for me. Like He will listen and review every single one of my sales calls. I don't know how he found the time to do that, but he listened and reviewed every single one of my sales calls. And he was able to say that your progress today was you did this, this, and this well. Right? And the reason you didn't get the results you wanted was because you didn't do that, that, and that well. And so the way you improve is you've got to understand this, this, and this. Now, go and try it again. And I will get another second call, and I will try it again. And so I had progress. And it's just a little bit. If this was a Tuesday, it was just a little bit. It just helped me critique one part. And then just improve that one part. If this was a Thursday, and I just want to role play that, you know, three more times, just practice six more times and just improve a little bit. And so a little bit and a little bit and a little bit year after year. And then I got a result. So if you are not aware, you're not conscious and you're not intentional of your progress or you're doing the thing that seems, feels like progress, but you be honest with yourself, are they really progress? Okay. If you're on the path, just by you being on the path itself, to me, that's already success. This is not entirely success. I define being on the path as success. So some, some people tell me, hey, Sean, you're very disciplined. You're very consistent. And it's not that I'm forcing myself. You know, I don't do that for myself. It's because the way that I define success, if it's Monday and I did this, I'm successful. If Tuesday I did this, I'm successful. If the whole week I'm practicing, I'm understanding, I'm studying, I'm internalizing, I'm successful. That's my experience. So you guys see on the outside, oh, he's, he's so consistent. Oh, he's so disciplined. Oh, he got results. This is happening inside of me. So have a good, clear look of how you personally see your own results. What's the cause of those, those results? And ask yourself, was today a success for you? Okay. This is the inner game of closing. And once again, when you see other people having wins, closing sales, it close a lot, close, 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 one million, two million. Don't look at it and go, oh, wow, then where's my own progress, right? Don't look at it and go, oh, wow, I'm, you know, where am I? If you compare... Like the fundamental reason people compare mm -hmm. is they don't understand their own value. Right? If you understand your own value, the comparison is not actually very relevant to okay, someone else's journey. You have to understand your own progress. Like I said in my previous slide, the okay, comparison will kill, will kill you. I, I've worked for business owners that they were great at the start, but as soon as they started comparing, they lost themselves and they never came back out of it. It's a very nasty place to be. You have to understand your own value. Today, all the things that you've done right, today, all the things that you've set up for yourself, do you see the progress in that? Do you see your success in that? Do you understand why? Because you must understand like when I was like right here, let's say if I draw a circle, if I just choose any spot, especially let's say this one, Right at this spot here, I would say I didn't feel any progress. It's just notebooks after notebooks, hand copy, hand copy, hand copy practice. Where's the progress? I didn't see it. 
when I was here, it's like role play, role play, role play. I, I still don't get it. I don't see the progress. When I was here, it's like, I don't see my team progressing. Like, how am I going to grow this team? When I was here, it's like, how am I going to grow this company? When I was here, it's like, how do I book calls? When I was here, it's like, how do I launch my own office? So if you don't recognize, like, in when you're inside, it's very hard to see. But when you have a coach that can help you see, when you look back and you see your progress, and you can clearly see, well, that year was a big year for me. Because I actually sat down and I focused and I studied and I went deep with my skills. That's success. Right? This is understanding your value. You cannot just say, I know the theory. I watched the video. But do you understand your value? Do you understand your progress? I don't just want you to know it. I want you to understand it. And when you understand it, you can see where you're going. You can start to believe. And now you know you're on your way. I've coached people like in the beginning, same thing. Where's my circle? When they were here, they don't see their progress. Right. And then they get to here. They start to be like, oh, I see it now. I can see a little bit. I'm booking calls now. I'm performing better on sales calls. Right? That's when they start to believe. And once you have to believe, once you have to believe, that's when you have the confidence. This breach is the theory implementation bridge. It can be a gap or it can be a bridge, right? And it's those people that never put in the work. They never have to believe because they don't understand the value. They can't trust it. And so they don't believe. And so what they tell you is no confidence, right? So I hope that by sharing this with you, you understand that confidence is a skill. And like any skill, it can be intentionally built. Okay, And it's not important whether I believe in you. It's not important whether other people believe in you. Okay? This is your journey. So as you experience what I'm talking about, ultimately, your confidence only comes from you believing in you. Okay, Then and only then, you taste the results. Okay? So this confidence for you to close is not from a course, it's not from theory, it's earth. And I want to be clear about the difference between nervousness and fear. Because you might say that as I go through this, as I learn, as I do sales, I feel this, I feel that. Are you feeling nervousness or fear? Nervousness is when it's just a bodily reaction, that's normal. Fear is when you didn't prepare. You didn't do your due diligence. Okay, you took shortcuts. That's fear. And fear is very different. Fear will take control of you. Fear will make you run away. Fear will make you self sabotage. Fear will screw everything up. Nervousness? Nervousness is fine because you can still function. Right? You can still perform. You can still operate normally. And that's a very normal thing. Right? That's your body telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready. Right? So preparation is every day. Okay? Working with my mentor. Before the sales call, you ask, have you researched the prospect? Do you understand who they are? Have you prepared your notes? You see the notebook here? Because he's training me. Have you prepared your script? If the prospect asks this, are you prepared? That's preparation. So when you face the unknown, you have nervousness, but you don't have fear. Okay, when you meet the unknown, you might still not have all the answers, but this one right here will help you win at least half of your battles. Okay, when you go through those battles, win, lose, or draw, now you start to accumulate experience points. Okay, and make up your mind about closing. Okay, if you have watched this deep, into my training, you're probably very concerned about your closing skills, whether you close for your own business 
or for someone else. I felt like the whole reason I could do all this was because over here, I burned all my bridges. This whole year, it was like no social life. I lost contact with all my friends. Uh, my relationship at the time, two years just ended. I stopped going out. I stopped doing everything. And I'm not saying that you should do that, right? But it, more, it is more of a state of a mind that you make up your mind. You want to be great at this or you want to be great at this, which is the wake up call. There are some people that are really tr good at treating this as a course. There are some people that are really good at treating this as part-time. All right, so make up your mind. And if you can see the value in closing, if you can see how closing affects your whole psychology, if you can see how closing affects your whole leadership, confidence, and business, then make up your mind, burn your bridges, and do what I did, which is to go all in. Okay? So this is the theory implementation bridge. And like I said earlier, this can exist as a gap, or it can exist as a bridge. Because whatever you're studying, you need to put yourself in live situations. And I was very lucky. And my first opportunity was a great opportunity. When I talk about the mirror principle, I, I, I personally feel that I attracted someone like, like this, not because I'm a UK guy, I'm not but I felt that our qualities were very similar. He focused a lot on preparation. I'm like that. He focused a lot on professionalism. I'm like that. He focused a lot on understanding, implementing, experiencing. I'm like that. So when someone asks me, how do you attract such a good opportunity? I would say, did you become that person? that's worthy of such an opportunity. Because if you are not ready, you know who you're going to attract? You're going to attract a team that is not ready. If you don't prepare, you're going to attract things, you know, that mirror that lack of preparation. And this is something you have to experience yourself to understand that. It's all, it's all, it's all ourself. Okay? And going through this experience, from you, okay, I have watched the video, I have seen the script and now I understand it. And now I've tried it and now I failed. Now I've tried it, now I failed. Now I've tried it, now I failed. You're actually going from knowing it and then you understand it a little bit and now it's yours. Okay, so when was the last time you challenged this gap? When was the last time you build a little bit of an extra bridge for yourself. When was the last time you went from knowing it to understanding it to owning it? A simple thing like a live call. When's the last time you practiced? I'm not saying the whole call, the full call. It may be just one part of it. When's the last time you make the space to practice? Because in this space, there's no boss, right? In this skill, there's no boss for you. You have to create your own structure. So this is me creating the structure for you. But in the end, you are the one that has to say, I'm going to improve this skill today. I'm going to practice. I'm going to find the opportunity. I'm going to get someone to practice with me. Right, I'm going to put myself in a situation where I can implement this. Right? So by the time you have experienced this for yourself, you will have a very clear way to discern that am I just playing with theory or am I implementing? Okay, and this is where your power is. For the people that I coach, I can see it in them when they start to see that, okay, I actually have this power. It's not because they watch a lot of videos. It's because 
they had someone they could lean on. They had someone that could watch their blind spots. They had someone who can go back and forth with them. And Carl was that person for me. That was why my first year, it was so fast for me. And everyone else that I knew, most of them were still stuck in practice mode. And when you cannot get it, it's a long, long nightmare. Okay. So this comprises the inner victory section. And for the next hour, I'm going to go deep into the inbound closing formula itself, the buyer's journey, seller's process, the lock and key principle, the micro close, okay, and the big three of the inbound closing psychology, solving the problem, the process, the solution. If you have someone already coming to you, you're already taking sales calls, you need to know uh, how to navigate it through all this thing. You're ultimately in sales. I feel like what we are really going for is not the money. I think the money is a secondary effect, a result. And I feel like the real cause is unlocking the decision of the buyer. If you can secure that decision of the buyer and you can clearly pinpoint what goes into this decision, even if you don't get the sale for now, you can still see why I didn't get the sale, why I need to improve. And how can I improve? Because you understand the construct of a decision. I feel that a lot of uh, content out there is about technique one, technique two, and then you just hope that a decision happens. Okay, so this is something that you can secure. This is something that you can control. This is something that you can impact. And if you can secure the decision or you understand the power of decision, not only internally, will you be able to make decisions firm, firmly and with confidence it, because you know how to close yourself on that. When you talk to a prospect, you can actually walk them through based on how you understand your decision-making process. I don't want to use the word hack, but you can probably have a really strong understanding of their decision-making process so you can help them get to their decision. And once they decide it's them closing you, it's no longer you closing them. Okay, plus some bonuses in the end. Okay, whatever that you need uh, to have a complete program, if you need a script, if you need some additional coaching, if you need some additional refinement, my goal is to continue to refine this program over the next week to make sure that this is a complete solution to make sure that closing is in you and you are closing. So to get the rest of the complete uh, system, the inbound closing formula, head over to seancena.com slash ICF. That's seancena.com slash ICF. And let me quickly put it in the comments. You should land on the sales page and have a read to see what's inside. Uh, this is the page itself. And the big ones are the micro close, so you don't have to deal with unqualified prospects ever again. Uh, the inner game of closing, that's all the tools for your identity index, as well as uh, the big one is actually the inbound closing formula itself, because we're going to map out the buyer's journey. We're going to map out the seller's process, and I'm going to show you what actually creates what I call the buyer impact, so that you create an inbound pool with your content. So the whole flow of people coming to you has to be inbound. If you're the one chasing, uh, it's very, very difficult. I've never actually closed any sale by chasing. I do initiate, I do reach out, but the reality is for them to come inbound, if you don't want to redo your marketing all over again for every call, you have to explain, you have to tell, you actually just need to do it once and understand that in your offer, what are all the designated micro closes that someone has to understand before they get on a call so that you don't have to repeat all your signature processes again. You don't have to lay out your offer again. You don't have to worry, should I tell the price now? Should I tell the price later? What kind of objections I have to deal with? The rule is that when it comes to inbound closing, the more micro closes that you can secure by understanding what is the journey that your buyers take, by understanding your seller's process and combine, I call this a lock and key principle. 
And how many of these micro closures can you secure? To the point, okay, I dare say to the point where sometimes you don't even need the sales call itself. When your micro closures are done so well, your, your prospects are already on the path that's properly architecture. I've sold a lot of high ticket products from 2K all the way to five figures where there was no sales call and it's all text back and forth. And in my mind, I can break all the rules because I learned this micro close. Okay, so it's your choice. Do you want to perform all the closing on one call? And then later on, you have another hour and then you have to perform the whole thing again on the second call. And if you're closing sales for your own business, I can tell you, you definitely don't have the headspace to be a hardcore closer and you know go beast mode and do all your crazy tonalities on everyone. Uh, the sooner you establish all your micro closes in your business, the more you can step back and let your prospect close themselves. So this is the inbound closing formula and the rest of it is all implementation. So if you want to work with me to build your inbound closing formula, head over to seancinacom slash ICF and scroll all the way down. You should see this big green button here and you click as the card. And if you want strategic setting and closing, that's all my scripts, all my touch points, all, all the how, all the what is all here. Uh, you get complete closer, which includes strategic setting, strategic closing, and the close method, all for uh, $300. If not, if you just want this formula is $100 and then fill out the details, you will land inside uh, your members area. And you keep this program, you keep all the tools, and you keep all the lifetime updates for this program. So that's seancinacom slash ICF. If you have a question, comment, or feedback, just reach out on social media and ask me, and then uh, I'll answer any question that you have. Okay, so for the free streamers, until next time, it is Sean Sina, and I will see you very soon. Okay, if I miss any of the messages, can uh, Mike just tell me, keep a lookout. If someone wants to enroll, just send them the link. Send them my Zoom link so then they can just join us for the second half, okay?